Thanks for bearing with us. We have a, quite a packed programme to get through for this press conference. I'm very honoured um, as uh, a member of the World Economic Forum's media team to have uh, that's been working with the Africa region for several years to be here for the announcement of uh, a further investment in sustainable infrastructure. This is a press conference to mark the Sustainable Development Investment Partnership, SDIP, um, project which is led by the World Economic Forum and the OECD and brings together a total of 35 international actors to unlock private sector funding in infrastructure. Not forgetting the fact that 80% of the costs involved in meeting the UN Sustainable Development Goals and the COP21 targets requires investment in infrastructure, so public-private cooperation here, absolutely essential. The Sustainable Partnership, the Sustainable Development Investment Partnership has been active in Africa for some time now and has one partner and, and a very thriving hub with a number of, um, of, of private sector and public sector organisations. This is a, a session to announce its first African uh, Asian partner, Cambodia. So I have here, I'm honoured to be joined by His Excellency Samjat Sejo Hunzen, the Prime Minister of the Kingdom of Cambodia. I'm also honoured to be joined by Keiko Honda, the CEO of Multilateral Investment Guarantee Agency, part of the World Bank Group uh, and a partner and uh, supporter of the project. And hopefully later we'll also be joined by Patrick Lamini, he's the Chief Executive Officer, Managing Director of the Development Bank of Southern Africa. But I'm going to um, hold it there, hopefully Patrick will join us, but most importantly I'd like to pass the floor to um, His Excellency the Prime Minister who's going to give us um, an indication of the rationale for Cambodia to become the first country in Asia to sign up to the SDIP partnership. <coughs> Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I think uh, we do not have many people, so I uh, prefer that my prepared speech uh, kept to be delivered to the distributor later. Uh, today I'm very pleased that Cambodia is the first country to, to join the SDG mechanism. Uh, actually, so the developed con uh, countries' uh, big challenges is on the infrastructures. Uh, actually, if uh, we uh, review the project of development of uh, the Libyan country, it could be uh, many heap in the warehouse because there is no financing to do it. Because if we talk about infrastructures in Asia, we have highway, uh, Asia Highway, ASEAN Highway, the uh, ASEAN, uh, the uh, Singapore Kunming Railroad. But the people the the if uh, we uh, uh, mobilize all the speech that head of state and government deliver on the infrastructures or the plan, the project of uh, the infrastructures, it, it could be stored in a two or three warehouse. And what is uh, the main uh, problem for that? It's financing that needs to uh, support uh, this project. But uh, it's lucky for some countries uh, that China initiated with uh, one belt uh, of one road and the Sea Road Fund of uh, 40 billion US dollars. In, uh, including in the establishment of the uh, Asian Infrastructures Investment Bank. 
But I think that still is not enough. We needed to mobilize all resources from the private sectors to support the project of infrastructure development. Seeing this importance of the investment from the private sectors uh, for the sustainable development of infrastructures, that have been signed agreements for the collector financing. I think this is an establishment of uh, the joint financing for infrastructures, which is, uh, I think, the win-win policies. Thank you for your attention. I get myself prepared to uh, answer any question if there is any. Thank you. Before we go to questions, I'd just like to um, uh, offer the, uh, the floor to Kiko Honda, the chief executive, of, as I mentioned earlier, of the multilateral investment guarantee agency. Kiko, I'd like you to do three things, if, if I may. First of all, talk to us a little bit about um, your role in the partnership uh, as, a, as a member. I mean, perhaps also you could give us some context on the importance of infrastructure um, uh, with regards to the Sustainable Development Goals. Um, and also I noticed we have some African journalists in the room as well. So perhaps um, because the partnership is quite well evolved in Africa, perhaps you could um, give us some Africa context as well as Asian. Sure. Well, thank you very much. MIGA, Multilateral Investment Guarantee Agency, is an agency of the World Bank Group. It was set up about 28 years ago to support foreign direct investment or the close-border private investment to developing countries by providing risk mitigation. There are five typical risks that a private investors often need to hedge. First, transfer and conversion risk. Second, breach of contracts by governments. Third, expropriation by the governments. Fourth, war and civil disturbance, and five, credit risk of the governments, including the sub-sovereign and SOE level. MIGA provides specific coverage of those risks. So this is the role that we play. Let's take an example of a private investor interested in investing, for example, in power generation in Cambodia. First, after generating power, they need to sell the power to the power company. In many developing countries, those power companies are often SOEs or state-owned enterprises. So private investors enter into some contracts with them. The investor may have some concerns about potential breach of the contract, especially some treatment in case of termination of the contract. MIGA can cover such risk with a breach of contract coverage. And let's move on to SDGs. Actually, infrastructure is a very important part of the uh, sustainable development goal. But there is a huge gap in infrastructure financing. $1.5 trillion, it's not billion, trillion, trillion dollars. So between now and 2030, if the current investment pattern continues, we will underinvest in infrastructure by 11% per year. Since the public financing, including ODA, is limited, we need to leverage more private investment to fill this gap. MIGA has been working with SDIP for about a year and a half. I have to tell you, SDIP is a great platform for multilateral development banks and the DFIs to work together to looking at the pipeline project to solve the issues on difficult transactions. Also, let me briefly touch upon MIGA's activity in Africa. By the end of the last fiscal year, by the way, World Bank Group's fiscal year is starting from July 1st and June 30th. 
please don't ask me why. I think it's a very interesting cycle, but that's what it is. So last fiscal year ended June 30th. Sub-Saharan Africa is the largest region for MEGA to bring in private investors and extending the various different support, including the South Africa. By the way, we are discussing with the highly likely support to um, extending our credit enhancement products to DVSA. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much for joining us, Patrick Delamini, Chief Executive Officer, Managing Director, Development Bank of Southern Africa. Um, you've been involved um, as a partner, I believe, also with SDIP for some time, and, and the African um, um, partnership, part of a partnership, is, is, is fairly well evolved. It's been launched at least, I think, two years. Could you talk to us a little bit about how you're helping transform um, and plug the infrastructure gap in your region? Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, George. My apologies. I was coming from another commitment. Uh, it really is a true honor for the Development Bank of Southern Africa to, to really play a role in the hosting and advancing the, the, the need of the UN in terms of the Sustainable Development Goals. The SDIP is one such platform like no other, as it really hopes to, to give us access to global best practice, the OECD and WEF and therefore the, the, the SD it will serve as well as the continent. We all know that actually the intra-regional trade within Africa is sitting at 13% in terms of the, the GDP. And why is it so low? It's because of the poor infrastructure network within the continent. And therefore the continent can do with all the help in terms of experience, in terms of knowledge, knowledge sharing, in terms of working with the non-governmental organization and donors to help come up with this blended financing and also coming up with the early stage project prep for many infrastructure projects on the continent. Here you're talking about a chronic shortage of, of power generation on the continent. You're talking about still very fragmented transmission lines between countries on the continent. Here you're talking about the drinking and potable water for the people of the continent. That still has a very long way to go. Here you're talking about ICT broadband infrastructure that is so important to help us leapfrog the current challenges, both in terms of achieving our education and access to education for the people of the continent. You're talking about also making it possible for the people of the continent to access primary health care if we have technology that actually will allow access to every country. This is actually talking to both terrestrial infrastructure as well as satellite infrastructure for rural areas. You hear you also are talking about the transport infrastructure. We talk to, to, to the various corridors in terms of the north-south corridor, the western corridor, the eastern corridor, the Baranagara corridors that are a serious topic point at the AU Head of State Summit to say how do we translate these PIDA projects into meaningful implementation on the ground. We are really are pursuing a one-stop border post which will take the, the delays at border posts for people and goods moving between the African continent from days into a matter of hours and even minutes in certain times. So the, the, the competitiveness of our supply chain on the continent will benefit a great deal if we are able actually to really work well with our partners and sharing the best practice with our partners globally as well as in the continent and accessing the pool of project prep funds for early stage development of our projects. It's an exciting time for us. Thank you, and, and, and great to see this exciting time and, and traction is, is, is happening. We don't have a huge amount of time because we want to also um, fit in some time for the formal signing of the agreement with His Excellency the Prime Minister. But let's see if there are any questions before we do this. Gentleman in the front row, could you remind us where you're from, please, sir, and, and your name? Um, hello, this is uh, Yong Bom Park from Mail Business Newspaper, South Korea. Um, uh, could you please tell me uh, some specific area or project you want to uh, get some investment from foreign uh, investors in, in Cambodia? And as you know, the uh, 
This year, Asian ASEAN celebrates 50th anniversary. So, do we have any plan to um, extend more relationship with other Asian countries, including Korea? Thank you very much uh, for uh, your question. I would like to inform you that Cambodia in uh, 1987, we put forth four, uh, four priorities. It has been put into practice for 30 years and it still continues to be a priority. The first priority is human resource development, which is necessary for Cambodia. In this field, we also get participated by the public sectors. In Cambodia, we have more than 100 universities run by the private sectors. Uh, the second priority is on water. Cambodia is a Greek cultural country. We need the water very much. On this field, we have very little participation from private sectors. Uh, the third priority is on electricity, which uh, in Cambodia we need a big fund for investment, especially on hydroelectricity. Uh, so far, we also receive investment from the work sectors in uh, the uh, hydroelectricity building as well as uh, the transmission line. And the fourth priority is uh, infrastructures, transportation, and telecommunication. So far for the development on these sectors, we have uh, some the uh, credit uh, from the uh, government of Korea, but no private sectors in participation yet. And the fifth priority so uh, in this field, we have uh, three projects. It's one is to build the new airport. The second is to have uh, the uh, high-speed uh, road from Phnom Penh to uh, Kampung Saum, which is uh, the uh, deep sea part of Cambodia. And the third is uh, the road from Phnom Penh to the borders of Cambodia and Vietnam. And and now we need also the big funds to modernize the Cambodian Railroad. And African Yes. And I would like also to welcome the, the representative from South Africa, in which I also met uh, your president before, Ambeki, in which he has been to Cambodia in the year 2002, in which uh, then we organized uh, the ASEAN African Summit over there. No, we don't have a huge amount of time, but if we can do a quick question, sir, just in the back there. Hi, Omar Ben Yedda from African Business Magazine. We know about the infrastructure, infrastructure gap in Africa, and when I speak to uh, investors, they say that the traditional model of financing infrastructure has got to change. Basically, in the past, we've relied too much on gov government guarantees, and we know how stressed public finances are today. 
So uh, what new models can we expect in the future and where can uh, MEGA and uh, the DBSA uh, get involved in financing these infrastructure investments without government guarantees? If, if, if I may, as a matter of fact, there is a one MEGA DBSA joint project is actually about to close. I think we'll be closing in a few months. MIGA has been providing political risk insurance for 28 years. About five years ago, we also added one product called credit enhancement. We do enhance the credit of some credit warranty municipality as well as SOEs, including DBSA, without having a sovereign counter guarantee. With, uh, with this, uh, DBSA essentially land the auctions to invite the world of multinational commercial banks who actually typically have lower funding cost, which is pushing the finances cost down for the DBSA. That's our intentions. But I think maybe why don't I just going to invite the CEO of DBSA, how um, you were viewing okay. about MIGA's support. Thank you. I, I think that it's one of the fundamental areas actually to address when it comes to trying to drive these projects without government guarantees. Because you can imagine of the least development countries, there's about, I think there's about 46 globally, between 37 and 39 are in sub-Saharan Africa. So most of these countries on the continent still depend on donor countries for donation. So the, the capacity of the central fiscus to backstop these projects is extremely limited. We have actually a very specific case in point, a gas-fired power station in Tanzania that actually we are doing without government guarantees. Again, because when every time you insist on government guarantees, you are limiting the government from doing other important projects. Economic infrastructure can be able to stand on its, low, on its own if you are able to come up with credit enhancing mechanism, like working with the likes of, of MIGA and working on also on ben, uh, accessing blended financing to make sure that actually you are able actually to come up with structures that work for the projects. Because the economic infrastructure have got their own revenue streams that can be able actually to service the loan if well structured. So the best practice globally becomes very important for us in structuring these projects so that they become fundable and bankable and attractive. All that needs to happen from the government perspective will be for governments to ensure that the regulatory framework that underpins these projects is very transparent, is very confidence building, is also very, the governance around them is also very transparent. Because once you have that, you are creating comfort so that when these guys have to come for a project, they can be able to crystallize the environment within which they are actually deploying their, their scarce capital. So it's very possible if we come up with good credit enhancement schemes and working with the right multilateral developments and international governments that are very keen and, 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 and non-government organization to make sure that we access blended financing and, and global break passes global best practices. Well, as um, CEO Dramani mentioned, not too much relying on sovereign counter guarantees, one important thing. But I think another important thing is the how we can leverage more private investors, including in Cambodia. There are some part of the infrastructure investments such as power and transportations I have to tell you, ultimate beneficiary, which is the kind of people of Cambodia, people of South Africa, willing to bear the cost. Those are the areas relatively easy to bring the private investors in. Having said that, always some project have some challenges. Then we really, need, then I think private actually need some support. We're more than happy to provide a support. IFC of the World Bank Group is more than happy to provide a support. But, you know, sometimes we cannot really solve the problem. Where SDIP come in to convene not only MDBs, but a DFIs, country, private investors. And we actually have a regular conference call 
to talk specific project during the conference call and then solve the problem, therefore project is going on. I think I mentioned our conference, this initiative has been going on about a year and a half. That means significant number of the professionals in our organizations, private investors, actually willing to spend the time on a conference call to discuss more project. I think that's the beauty of it. Thank you. Thank you very much. And actually, we don't have a huge amount of time now, so we're going to use the remaining portion of this session. Uh, I'm going to ask His Excellency the Prime Minister to sign this, this, the agreement document. And the Minister of Finance is also going to join us. Okay. He has to sign it. Okay. It's me. It's in his name. So it's the Minister of Economy and Finance, Senior Minister Dr. Aaron Porn Monira. That's the Minister of Finance, Cambodia. Uh, duly noted, and, and my apologies for getting it wrong. And if photographers, photographers are more than welcome to come up to the front to take the take pictures close up. Do you want to move your cameras? Move your cameras to the front. Thank you very much uh, for joining us here for this very important signature session and press conference. This session is now over.